as you can see, or I hope you can see, these are the interphalangeal joints. This one, distal, this one, proximal. And this is the specific one he dislocated. Now, these dislocations are, are common among athletes. This is common against amongst people that play after work and, and you know, play on the weekends. When you, when you jam your finger, that's pretty much what you're jamming. The proximal interphalangeal joint. It doesn't matter which finger you jam. For the most part, you're jamming that proximal interphalangeal joint. Hey, what's going on? This is Sports Vibes TV. I'm your host, Keith, and I'm coming at you with another X-ray analysis. Now, in this video, we're going to be reviewing Norvell Pills' injury. He sustained the injury in the fourth quarter against the Detroit Pistons. Luckily, he was still able to remain in the game, but we haven't heard any reports of exactly what happened. Based on the photos and the video I saw when I was watching the game, and I was able to come up with my own diagnosis, then I want to explain it to you here in this video. Now, in order for me to do that, I'm going to have to go through the anatomy or a little bit of the anatomy of the hand, and I'm then going to reinforce some of that anatomy with the x-rays. Now, once again, I'm not a doctor. I'm an x-ray tech. So all of this is basically from what I've learned in school and also some firsthand experience. Uh, I've got scrubs on, but you know, you can see from my dosimeter, this is what we use to make sure we don't experience or get exposed to too much radiation. This is how they monitor it. So now when it comes to Norvell pill, based on what I saw out there, I would say Norvell pill sustained a dorsal dislocation of the proximal interphalangeal joint of his second digit. When I give you that diagnosis, that's something I've seen before and I've had a little bit of experience with. So I'm going to say it one more time. He had a dorsal dislocation of his proximal interphalangeal joint. Now, in order to better understand what this injury is, you're going to have to understand the part of the hand we're dealing with. And that's given to you in the second portion of what I said. So it's going to be proximal interphalangeal joint. That's where the injury occurred. Now, take a look at your hand. I'm gonna put mine up on the screen. I just noticed I got some permanent marker on it, but that's neither here nor there. Now, the bones of the fingers, when they're more than one, they're called phalanges, right? If it's just one, you call it a phalanx. Not just one finger, but if you got like one piece, it's called a phalanx. So the thumb has two phal phalanges. I'm about to call them phalanxes. The thumb has two phalanges, and in the other four digits, they have three, right? So now think about a road or uh, a street. When two roads, two streets meet, it's called an intersection. So when you look at your phalanges, when two phalanges meet, it's called a interphalangeal joint. A joint where two phalanges meet. Bada bing, bada boom. So your thumb has one interphalangeal joint. And quick fun fact, most people's thumbs, they just go straight. Mine got a little quirk to it. I can kind of bend it at like a 90 degree angle. Some people say I'm weird, whatever. You know, the, again, that's neither here nor there. So if you look at the other fingers, you kind of run into a problem because although the thumb only has one interphalangeal joint, the other four have two. So now speaking about it medically, you're going to have to differentiate each one. So they have a solution. The first would be a name the one furthest from you the distal interphalangeal joint. And what helped me in school is I always thought of distant. So the furthest one is distant. Now, if you're gonna go to the next one, the next one is going to be proximal. When I thought about it, I thought close proximity, close to me. And those two terms, distal, proximal, they're pretty much in reference to where two bones are in relation to each other. Now, usually they're talking about the midline, which is an anatomical plane of your body. So in reference to your midline, you have the proximal interphalangeal joint. 
when you, you know, when you see a body, the body spread out like this. So if you were to spread my hand out like this and you would look at my midline, the proximal interphalangeal joint would be closest to the midline and then you would have the distal. So now I kind of broke down that diagnosis and you kind of understand it, or I hope you understand the latter portion. So I'll just brief say the, uh, the prognosis was the dorsal dislocation of the proximal interphalangeal joint. So proximal, well, it was a second digit, proximal interphalangeal joint of the second digit. So now I hope that you understand that second portion of it. Let's kind of jump into the dorsal dislocation. So if you saw it, you can notice that it was a dislocated finger. So that part, you know, I don't really have to get too in depth with, but if you want to, you don't know what dorsal means, I would put it like this dorsal or in my previous Mitchell Robinson video, I kind of talked about anterior posterior. I'll link that up above. Dorsal is like another way that you can refer to the posterior portion of the back. Like there's certain instances where posterior wouldn't fit. And this is one of them. You would use the word dorsal. And if you're not familiar with what dorsal is, I would say, you guys remember that movie uh, where LL Cool J surprised everyone and actually survived to the end of the shark movie. I think it was what, Deep Blue Sea, something like that. Well, when you look at sharks, one of their signature I guess one of their signature, what can I say? When you look at sharks, one of their signature markings is like their fin sticking up out the water. And the name of that fin is the dorsal fin. So basically dorsal is just another term for your back. So that fin is coming out their back. So they call it a dorsal fin. Another movie I like, Free Willy. You looked at Free Willy, the, the killer whale, he had a very, very unique dorsal fin. His was kind of like curved. So dorsal, just another re, that's another way of saying something's going towards the back. Now you're saying, how does that factor into your hand? Well, well, what's your backhand, right? So that means that the dislocation went back this way. You can see that. And what I'll do is I've got a couple x-rays kind of try to, to show you or, or break it down a little bit further. But basically that's what that is. Dorsal dislocation of the proximal interphalangeal joint of the second digit. Once again, you know, I, I hope now that I've said it to you, it doesn't sound as much like word soup. You kind of understand. And just to kind of reinforce what I've been uh, talking about, we're gonna jump right into some x-rays just to kind of get a better understanding of what exactly I'm saying. So now that we're in the x-ray, just to reinforce some of the things I was speaking about before, as you can see, these are the phalanges and the specific one we're discussing is the second digit, which is your index finger, pointer finger, however you wanna to refer to it as. In the medical field, they say second digit. Now, as you can see, or I hope you can see, these are the interphalangeal joints. This one, distal, this one, proximal. And this is the specific one he dislocated. Now these dislocations are, are common among athletes. This is common against amongst people that play after work and, and you know, play on the weekends. When you, when you jam your finger, that's pretty much what you're jamming. The proximal interphalangeal joint. It doesn't matter which finger you jam. For the most part, you're jamming that proximal interphalangeal joint. So it's common. And I would say the biggest hope is he didn't sustain any kind of fracture. Because if he sustained the fracture, he's gonna miss some time. Because what happens with this joint when, when you dislocate it, you have the chance that you sustain a, a, a bulging fracture. Now, an avulsion fracture, I would liken it to, think about it if you have some piece of tape. You tape two pieces of paper together, right? You pull the tape off quickly, and you're gonna see on the tape, you still still see be some like remnants of paper. Sometimes you still might even have like a big chunk of paper, just, you know, joined along for the ride. That would be somewhat like an avulsion fracture due to the, you know, the blunt trauma, the 
a piece of the bone got pulled off or got stuck with the ligament as it tore. And now you're going to have to have surgery and clean that up. So hopefully that's not what happened. Hopefully it was just a, a simple dislocation. They're going to pop it back in and then they'll just, you know, put a brace on it and, and he might be day to day or might miss a week, but hopefully he doesn't have to require surgery. So this right here is just a typical AP or PA hand x-ray. PA means it goes through the back of your hand. Posterior comes out through the anterior portion of your hand. Uh, this one is a perfectly fine x-ray there's nothing going on here so i just want to jump now into one that's dislocated and boom there we go with this location oh, i moved the whole x-ray pull up right here you can see something screws going on now when you compare it to the other three right here this is your proximal interphalangeal joint and this shows out of place, it's dislocated. And this is probably a similar injury to what Peels sustained. Now, once again, I don't have Peels medical records. So I'm basically just going off, once again, things that I've seen out in the field and what I've learned. So hopefully I, you know, I hope you found this video educational. Um, if you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button and the like button. And also let me know your comments down below. Do you want to see me do some more videos on Knicks injuries or, or other injuries around the NBA? Let me know down in the comments. Once again, I'm Keith, host of Sports Vibes TV, and I'm out.